Hey, hey, hey! Happy Monday morning, guys! Day one of school holidays, <clears throat> excuse me, here in sunny Victoria. Uh, I know a few of our friends in Queensland have been on holidays for a little bit longer. Uh, how good is my fluffy hair? I'm not sure who's around this morning. Uh, totally, totally appreciate and understand if you are in the thick of it, hanging out with the little peeps. Uh, but I just thought I would jump on and say hey, hey, and see how you guys are going. Hope you had a cracking weekend. Ours was hectic, but manageable. Um, and yeah, now I just got to get myself through school holidays. Um, all of that for me, as far as what success looks like in school holes, is managing my own expectations. So I've really, really tried, potentially unsuccessfully this week, to pull back a little bit on my workload. Um, hey, Tamara! Going to be able to achieve consistency. Can you tell me if I'm streaming smoothly, I guess? I keep getting a poor connection message, which is awesome. Uh, I think it's just Optus being annoying. <coughs> just let me know if you can see me and hear me consistently, because that's always a good start. So I thought I would have a quick chat to you this morning, <coughs> this morning about uh, decision making. Uh, I've been speaking to a lot of my clients um, a lot about this recently, and it really is kind of fast becoming one of the number one reasons why people are employing me as a biz coach or people are employing or wanting to work with somebody full stop. And I'm finding a, a, nearly all the conversations or the people that are coming to me are anchored or stuck in a feeling of overwhelm and they've got this weight and this pressure on their shoulders and they don't know how to best move forward. Ultimately, they don't know how to make a decision or don't know which decision um, to make and how to best move forward. Hey, Lucy, nice to see you. I hope you're okay, you poor little sicky. It is freezing and jumping all over the shop, but I thought that was an issue on my end. Oh, hopefully it is an issue on your end. Lucy, can you tell me if I'm jumping and freezing and all over the shop as well? The joys. Uh, there is an epic FIFA World Cup um, battle going on downstairs at my house. So if you hear crazy screaming or anything else, uh, I'm not murdering the kids. Everybody's okay. It's just hectic. Um, so decision making. So regardless, on, uh, regardless of what stage you are, is either going to help you build momentum. If you are not able to make clear and quick and decisive decisions and power ahead, um, you are, you're going to have that feeling over, over overwhelm. You're going to feel stuck. You're going to feel like it's not working. So on and so on. Seconds. Great job, Emily. Um, decision making is a really, really important skill for us all to have and for us to understand how we can improve that or upskill on that moving forward. So in small business wants to thrive and wants to be able to build that momentum so they can quickly move forward. So it's really important that you um, have strength or have confidence in how you make your decisions and ultimately how you can quickly move through that decision making process. Now, obviously it depends on whether you're making a freaking massive decision or whether you're making a quick small decision as to how quickly or how long that time frame is. Uh, and I'll talk to you a little bit about that later on this morning as well, but clarity on um, where you get stuck in that decision-making process and how you can pull yourself through it faster, uh, because that is what's going to set you up for success. That's what's going to help you thrive and help you build that quick momentum so that you can not feel like you're jammed here that it is that you want to make. So um, often we catastrophize and we get carried away with our own thoughts and all of a sudden there's like 65 different decisions in our head that we're trying to make. Now that's not very helpful for anyone. So getting really, really clear is that you need to actually define pathways or some of the options and how you best move forward, some of your, your um, opportunities. What's your desired outcome? So what are you ultimately trying to achieve with this decision um, and how you want to feel at the end of it. So if you make this decision, are you going to feel horrified? Are you going to feel scared? Are you going to feel nervous? Are you going to feel bold and confident? So what is that feeling or that emotion attached with making that decision? So um, the other thing to consider is what impact it's going to have on your ultimate business plan or your ultimate strategy. And is it going to push you closer to where you're trying to get to? 
So all of those things sit in the scope or the different definition of what that decision is. Now, if you're just trying to decide what to have for lunch, you probably don't need to consider all of those things. If you're trying to decide whether to sell your business or whether to keep pushing forward with your business, you absolutely need to decide and define each and every one of those um, elements of that decision-making process. So step one, is always about defining the decision that needs to be made. Trying to make that as single-minded as possible so that you don't get lost in that vortex and that catastrophizing of, and what about this, and what about this, and what about this, and then this will happen, and that might happen, and then the world's gonna end, it's a disaster type mentality. Getting really, really clear on what the scope is and what you're trying to achieve. What's that desired outcome look like? The second uber important massive one for me is to set a time limit give yourself a deadline it might be a self-imposed deadline um getting like just forcing yourself to say okay i'm gonna sit in this overwhelm for a little while i'm gonna sit in the unknown and the gray and the kind of do i don't i do i don't i but i'm only gonna do that for another two days or another 48 hours or to the end of the week and give yourself a defined deadline that as of 3 p.m. on Thursday, I'm gonna make a decision, I'm gonna move forward. And that self-imposed deadline will give you a little bit of control or it will make you feel like you're in control, but it will also ensure that you're not sitting in overwhelm and sitting in gray and fog for the next seven weeks because that's not gonna help you thrive and it's not gonna help you build momentum to move forward. It's so, 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 so easy to spiral out of control and to feel like you're stuck in that, should I, shouldn't I, yes, no, oh, I don't know, I'll just wait and decide later, push it away. Um, and God, trust me, I've been there. Like we've all been there many, 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 many times. I don't know why I'm repeating myself so many times today. So, 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 so many, many, many. Hey, Zoe, nice to see you. Um, but you want to kind of think twice about what your decision is, but you don't want to second guess yourself every step of the way. So setting yourself that self-imposed deadline to say, okay, I am going to happily sit in the overwhelm. I'm going to consider all of my options. I'm going to overthink it till my pants fly off for the next 48 hours, but nine o'clock on Wednesday morning, boom, that decision is going to be made. And that is when I'm going to move forward. And that self-imposed deadline will absolutely help you move forward. I also don't have a problem with you sitting in that feeling of overwhelm or sitting in that should I, shouldn't I for a, for a little while. Um, I don't want you to make a hasty decision. I don't want you to just make a rash kind of, okay, I'm in, fine, without considering some of those options. So I do think there is benefit in sitting in that overwhelm for a little while. It's just defining what for a little while means so that you're not there for another six weeks. Hey, Narelle, I hope you had a really nice holiday last week. I look forward to hearing all about it and catching up this week. So number three is about control. Control freak here. It's a big one. Um, I often find myself catastrophizing when I'm making decisions and umming and ahhing about things that are actually completely out of my control. So it's really important just to continually remind yourself when you're trying to decide A or B or which path to take, it's do I actually have control of that situation? Can I influence that outcome? And if the answer is no, there's no point even thinking about it. So if you're worrying about what somebody might think of you if you decide A or B, or what the potential outcome might be. None of us can predict the future. None of us can control other people. All you can, can all you can decide on and act on is what's within your control. So it is really important in those moments to go, can I control this? What's within my area of expertise or my area of control? And can I actually influence this situation? Because if it's completely out of your control and there's nothing you can do about that, you just have to let go of that feeling and focus on what you can actually control. And that's a really big one because I do often find with my clients and even the potential clients that I speak to, they're really stressing out and freaking out about something that is so far out of their control that there's almost, it's almost just, well, it is, it's not almost, it is absolutely wasted energy and it's not helping them make a decision or move forward. So the other important thing when it comes to self-reflection in, in that decision-making process is to have a think about pat pattern recognition, um, which is a really fancy way of um, saying when you've made previous decisions, what have you learnt? So reflecting on what your last decision-making process was or the last thing that happened in that process. So 
if the last time you had to make a really big decision that you took way too long to make that decision or you didn't spend enough time weighing up the pros and cons or you didn't engage the right people in a timely way or whatever it might be, having a look back at what you can learn and what you can draw from that experience will hopefully help you make a decision in moving forward now with this next big decision or these next series of decisions that you're making. So that pattern recognition, I've got a number of clients who make really quick, rash decisions, make the decision, move forward, get to the next step and go, oh shit, this, this is not what I wanted to be doing. I should have gone down that path just because they didn't spend enough time sitting in the pros and cons stage or weighing up the options or whatever it might be. So it is really helpful to think back to the last time you had to make a big decision or what are those key learnings that you can draw from? What's your natural tendency when you're stuck or when you're feeling like you've got, well, you have to make a big decision about moving forward. Don't spend 17 hours looking back and over analyzing and beating yourself up for making a shit decision because that's not gonna be helpful at either. But um, we do generally have a pattern and recognizing that pattern does help us um, or could help us moving forward if we acknowledge that. The next really big one that I find helpful and um, gives you a really good understanding of my crazy A-type personality is to try and do everything you possibly can to avoid decision fatigue. So decision fatigue is absolutely a thing. Uh, we are faced with 75 billion, million, zillion, gazillion decisions to make every single day, whether that's teeny tiny, small decisions or big decisions. There are messages and things flying at us left, right and centre every second of the day. So anything you can do, and that's it, tiring, like it is really tiring every day, that mental load of getting up and going, do I do this? Do I do that? What do I wear? What do I eat? What do I, how do I want to do my hair? Which earrings? Where am I going to drive? Where should I get my coffee? Blah, 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 blah. So on and so forth. There is just decisions that you are making without you even realizing that you're making them. So anything that you can do to reduce that decision fatigue is going to set you up for success. So that when you do have to make some of these bigger, like meatier, more important decisions, that you're not at a point of fatigue or not at a point where you're like, oh, another bloody decision. You are feeling on your A game and you're moving forward in the right direction. So just to give you an insight into my bananas personality, some of the things I do to help reduce the decision fatigue is things like my clothing. So Steve Jobs was like the king of this. He wore exactly the same clothes every single day for like, I think it was 25 years of his life. He wore the same skivvy and the same pair of jeans. He sometimes wore a black t-shirt instead of a skivvy. <gasps> Shock horror. <laughs> but that is that for him was all about limiting decision fatigue. He didn't want to get up in the morning, stand in front of his wardrobe and go, red, blue, yellow, green, stripes, paint, blah. He was like, boom, in and out of the wardrobe within 10 seconds. So... I'm not suggesting that you need to build your wardrobe into blue jeans and black skivvies all day, every day. Uh, that would make me a very, very unhappy person. But I plan my wardrobe on a Sunday. I have a look at what the weather's going to be like and I have a look at what I've got in my schedule. And I loosely, no, not even loosely, I won't lie. I map out what I'm going to wear probably for five or six days of the week. I then hang it in a special part in my wardrobe so that I know on Monday, boom, off and racing. Tuesday, boom, off and racing. I sometimes deviate against that or deviate from that plan. Sometimes I wake up and go, oh, I really feel like wearing pink and I might take Wednesday's outfit and put it on a Monday. I know, crazy. Um, but 90% of the time I get out of the shower, I walk into the cupboard and I'm like, boom, I'm off and racing. I don't stand there trying on 55,000 things, trying to decide this one or that one, looking at the weather, looking at my calendar, blah, 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 blah. I've already done all of that pre-work. So I have a, a much smaller decision-making process or less decisions to make in the morning. I even do my accessories. I know. When I was mapping out my wardrobe last night, I was like, oh, I'm going to go for patterns and stripes, which is crazy for ESS. That's just not what I do. And I was like, what earrings am I going to wear? So I literally go and map out my jewelry, my outfits, my shoes, so on and so forth. So in the morning, which is a pretty stressful time, there's little people around. I'm trying to get out the door. I'm always, you know, chasing my tail or trying to manage expectations of other people or whatever it might be. I'm reducing that decision fatigue. 
It's the same with meal planning, same with the supermarket, writing yourself a shopping list, getting your meal plan sorted so that you've got less decisions to make on the fly when you're under pressure. And all of that will set you up for success for when those bigger decisions do arrive, that you're not in a state of even more things to decide. Um, you're on your A game. And, and I do really encourage you to have a think about when you are on your A game throughout the day. Some of us are morning people, some of us are night people. When do you feel on top of your game? When are you in like Tony Robbins peak state where you're like, yeah, boom, I'm winning. That's the best time to make your decisions. If you're trying to decide some of those big things, do I, don't I, should I, shouldn't I, all that sort of stuff. Um, for me, I'm a massive morning person. So I naturally wake up, generally speaking, at the same time every morning. I'm on my A game between <laughs> probably when I don't speak to my clients sorry clients I'm at like in peak state at 6 a.m. in the morning that's just me don't hate me um, find me at 11 o'clock at night and I'm like a little nana in the corner unless I'm sugar fueled or had a second wind but I make most of my decisions first thing in the morning because that's when I'm at my on my a game or in my peak state so again what can you do to reduce some of those itty bitty small decisions not spend 25 minutes trying to decide whether you have sushi or a sandwich for lunch making those quick small decisions easy just go bang back yourself keep going um, planning out your wardrobe planning out your meals planning out your week whatever it might be getting on the front foot will help you make those small decisions faster so that when the bigger decisions arrive you don't have decision fatigue do not sweat the small stuff uh, there's a really awesome book which is not staring at me in the face so I can't tell you who it's from literally called don't sweat the small stuff um, I used to work at work in the corporate world and I gave a copy of that book to every single person who ever reported into me um, just some really really helpful super simple hacks or tips in there about not getting stuck or bogged down in the insignificant stuff that doesn't really help any of us move forward or doesn't help us be the best person that we want to be as well. So um, trying to reduce some of those small, quick decisions, making those decisions as simple and straightforward so you can keep moving forward. Number six is a mindset game. Shock horror, she's talking about mindset again, but it's really, really important that you learn to embrace uncertainty. I know, it, I'm a massive planner, I have um, extreme A-type personality at the best of times, but um, being comfortable with uncertainty is a really, really good skill to have. Hey, Sean, nice to see you. Chrissy, how are you, girl? Nice to see you guys. Thanks for saying hello. Um, so I want you to try and start to start to stop. Try and stop beating yourself up about the stuff that you get wrong because part of the decision making process is taking those learnings, taking those risks and making mistakes. And hopefully you don't make massive mistakes because you've mapped out some of the alternate pathways and you've considered your options and you've spoken to people and so on and so forth. But embracing uncertainty, none of us can predict the future. So how do you live in the now? How do you understand what you can control and start to make some of those decisions about what um, where you want to take your business or how you want to best move forward um, is really, really helpful for your confidence, for your self-belief and for your decision-making ability. So uh, I always refer to Richard Branson in this situation. He's been a huge inspiration to me when it comes to decision-making. He has two, I've talked about this heaps, you guys are probably like, oh, she goes again. But um, two quick questions that he asks himself when he's trying to make a decision. And that might be, what am I going to have for lunch? Or oh, he wouldn't sweat the small stuff, but, or it might be some massive, am I going to buy a new plane? Again, it's probably sweating the small stuff for him. He'd be like, yep, buy the plane. But for me, it'd be quite a big deal. <laughs> so his two big questions are, what's the worst thing that can happen? So let's say I'm trying to decide if I'm going to invest um, $2,000 to work. Uh, no, let's say I'm going to try. Uh, do I want to go to this event? Do I want to spend $500 on this upcoming workshop? Let's, let's say it's a lot of money. Do I want to spend the time out of my business? Do I actually need what they're teaching? Is it the right environment? Are they the right people? So on and so forth. So should I spend the $500? His first question to you would be, well, what's the worst thing that can happen? Now, in that situation for me, the worst thing that can happen is that I spend my $500, I go to the workshop, I don't learn anything new, and it's a waste of time. Yep, let's go with that. I've wasted my $500, I haven't learned any new skills, and it was just a bit of a waste of time. 
His second question is, can you handle it? Like if that situation actually came to fruition, could you handle it? And the answer for me is hell yeah. Like, you know, worst case scenario, I've wasted my $500 and I haven't learned anything new, but there's a really good chance that I'll go to that and I might meet some new people or I might be reminded of some old pieces of information or some old nuggets that I haven't thought about for a while. So can I handle it? Yeah. Like I can still pay my mortgage. I can still feed my children something other than baked beans or two minute noodles. Um, and yeah, okay. I haven't learned anything new, but I might've met some new cool people or been reminded of some stuff I should be looking at anyway. So that's a, therefore becomes a pretty easy decision. I can afford it. Um, it, the worst thing that can happen is that I don't learn anything, but can I handle it? Absolutely. Boom. I'm often racing decision made. So I find those two super simple, like stupidly simple questions from the great man himself to be really, really helpful. What's the worst thing that can happen and can I handle it? Now, that is relevant and really um, relevant, I'll just repeat myself, for whether you're trying to decide what to have for lunch or whether you're trying to decide should I invest $25 billion? So what am I going to have for lunch? What's the worst thing that can happen is that I choose something that I don't really feel like. Can I handle it? Hell yeah. Boom. Job done. And should I sell my business or should I invest my $25 billion on the new plane? What's the worst thing that can happen is that I lose all my money. I go bankrupt and I have to, and I have to sell my house. Can I handle it? No. So don't do it. Don't buy the plane. So just like, I know that sounds so 101, super simple, but you will be amazed at how powerful that tool is and how helpful it is because it's two super simple questions and it, it forces you to consider the outcomes. What's the desired outcome of this decision that I'm trying to make and can I handle it? And if you can't handle it, then that's the decision. Like if you can't handle feeding your kids baked beans or you can't handle the money, you, you know, having ex extra money sitting on the credit card or you're not sure if you'll be able to pay the mortgage or you don't know if you'll enjoy working with those people or whatever it might be, then that's your decision. The answer is no, you shouldn't move forward with that or you shouldn't be working with them or whatever it might be. It's the worst thing that can happen and can I handle it? Super simple, but so, oh, so powerful. Uh, now, number seven is just a quick sense check and it's to consider if there's a root core, a root problem that you need to address at the same time. So I come up with this quite a bit, or I come across this, I should say, quite a bit with my clients. So I often find, let's say, product-based businesses who um, have been let down by their suppliers and let's say that... Um, their product was meant to arrive on the 1st of July and it's now not due till the 21st of July. So they have to go and communicate to all their customers or their wholesalers or their vendors or whatever that the product's late. And this has happened three months in a row now. So, you know, God, here we are again trying to decide how I best communicate to my wholesalers. So you obviously still need to decide how you best communicate and what that engagement plan looks like. But there's a root problem here that you can also address. So there's been three or four months now where your delivery has arrived three months late. So what's going on with your wholesaler or what's going on with your supplier or your courier company or whatever it might be? And how can you better manage that situation so that you don't even have to get yourself into this decision making moment? Um, it might be about managing your own expectations or it might be about building in a buffer with your vendors to say it's, you know, you know that it's being that it's arriving on the first, but you're not telling them it's arriving till the twentieth, just in case it's late because they have a track rec track record of being late. Um, or there might be something that you can set up with your supplier to better understand the custom system or whatever it might be, so that you never get to the situation of needing month and month and month in a row of having to communicate to your vendors, yeah, we're late again we're not trustworthy, we're not delivering, we're not keeping our promises, so on and so forth. So it's just sometimes helpful when you're trying to make a decision and you're looking back at that pattern recognition that I spoke about earlier on. If this is a consistent problem or a consistent thing that's coming up for you, there might be a root problem or an underlying um, anchor that you could address that would eliminate the need for these decisions moving forward. I hope that makes sense. And then the eighth or the final one for me is about learning from your mistakes. So we will always, um, we will always sometimes make the wrong decisions. God, I am insightful. <laughs> We're going to get it wrong sometimes or it's not going to play in our favour. 
shit's going to happen or whatever it might be. Um, and learning from those mistakes is really, really helpful. So not beating yourself up, not telling yourself over and over, damn, you're an idiot. You made the wrong choice. You're hopeless. You're terrible in business, blah, 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 blah. It's None of that is going to help you. Um, acknowledging that, okay, I should have done this or I could have spoken to her or it would have been important. It would have been gratified X, Y, and Z. Um, they're really, really, really helpful learnings and great tools for you to then take when you are making your next decision or when you're next pl um, faced with that feeling of overwhelm and giving um, that gray, heavy feeling that we sometimes find. So give yourself feedback, reflect on how that situation went, reflect on how long you sat in the overwhelm or the uncertainty for, and how do you feel now that you've made that decision? So I made a really big decision a couple of weeks ago. I sat in it for, ugh, too long, probably two or three weeks. Um, I, you know, weighed up all of my pros and cons. I spoke to some of my closest um, friends and cheerleaders. Um, and I've done a lot of self-reflection now that I've made that decision and I'm moving forward and I feel really good about it, but I am looking back on it and going, okay, what could I have done differently? How would I have made a quicker decision or engaged different people? Or what can I learn from that decision-making process? Because I have no doubt I will be faced with another big decision at a point in time sometime soon and looking back on that time and going okay i probably sat in that overwhelm for a little bit too long or whatever it is um what can i learn so giving yourself some feedback to go no i did a really and i do i feel like i really did a really good job i engaged some great support um i asked for help i did my pros and cons list i weighed up my options um, I considered what's the worst thing that can happen and can I handle it? Uh, and that was really, really helpful in helping me make those decisions and move forward. So taking a moment to stop and go, how did I do? Like, how did I go throughout that process? How do I feel about that process? Did I sit well, you know, did I sit with stand by my values and, and feel like I did a good job? And those key learnings will help you move forward. So um, the biggest tools I use when I'm faced with a big uncomfortable decision is absolutely that Richard Branson model. What's the worst thing that can happen and can I handle it? The second one is a good old pros and cons list. There is a lot to be said for a pros and cons list. Um, I know it's super daggy and I know it's super old school, but just mapping out all the good, all the bad, what's the positives and the negatives, even just understanding what the sheer difference in that list is or understanding the severity of some of the positives or some of the strength, you know, whatever it might be, pros and cons list goes a really long way. It also stops you from catastrophizing some of the stuff that's out of your control and some of the stuff that you're like, God, what happens if the world stops spinning and I don't breathe for a day or all that kind of stuff is not obviously going to help you move forward and not within your control. So if you focus just your pros and cons on well, what can I control? What are the good, what's the good that can come and the bad that can come in this situation? How do I best move forward? Really, really helpful. And then goes without saying, but asking for help, whether that be from a biz coach like myself, whether that be from a family member, somebody in your business network, somebody removed from the situation or who knows a little bit, but is not emotionally invested in that decision or that situation for you. Um, it's just so helpful. I can't remember the expression, but you know, a problem shared is a problem lessened or something like that. I hope you're not watching anymore, Chrissy. <laughs> Always get that stuff wrong. But um, sharing those problems with your network or with your people, not, you know, not bitching and gossiping to a thousand people about whatever, but just taking a few of those really trusted, honored, amazing people in your network and going, okay, this is what I'm faced with. What would you do? How would you halved? A problem shared is a problem halved. Thanks, Kristen. Boom. God, I love you. <laughs> I knew it was lessened or something. Um, you know, trying to find someone that's neutral, that's not emotionally invested and somebody that you can share that with who can potentially give you some a different perspective or a different um, possible outcome is really helpful as well. So decision making 101. I hope that's helpful. If you are currently sitting in that overwhelm, that grey, that should I, shouldn't I, that, oh, it's all too hard, I'm going to, I'll, I'll look at it later or I'll come back and decide that next week or whatever it might be, just shout out, like shoot me an email. I get emails from um, you guys every week going, just a quick question, X, Y, and Z, and I'm so happy to come back and just go, yep, this is what I do, or have you considered this, or maybe go and speak to this person or whatever it might be, depending on your situation. But um, it is really, really, really helpful just to sometimes have some fresh eyes uh, and 
there is nothing, well, there's plenty of things that are worse, but in biz, you want to be able to feel like you're thriving and that you're building momentum. So there's nothing worse than sitting in that gray, in that overwhelm. You've got the weight on your shoulders and you're like, oh, I'm just stuck. I just feel like I'm sitting in quicksand or sitting in glue. Uh, so if you need help with decision making, um, I do reckon it's one of my superpowers and I'll be humble. I'll boast, whatever, that um, I, I, I'm really good at decision making. So uh, I'm not, it's not to say that I don't sometimes sit in that gray, and I certainly do, but there's benefits sometimes to sitting in that gray or sitting in that overwhelm as well. So if you need help making decisions, if you need help with your marketing plans, which path to take, which channel to use, which influencer to engage with, whatever it might be, um, absolutely reach out and ask for help. I'm really happy. Have you been spying on me, me to a T right now? Yeah, Karen, it's it's not, you're not alone. Sorry, girl, you're, you're really unoriginal in your thinking. Um, we all are faced with tricky situations or icky situations or uncomfortable situations at the best of times. And that's, it does, it just tests us and it challenges our decision-making process and it challenges our resilience and our grit. Uh, and sometimes it's just a bit bleh. And none of that helps and none of that makes us feel very good about ourselves as women or humans or business owners. Uh, and it is really easy to spiral into um, catastrophe land of like, oh, I don't know, and should I and shouldn't I, and this is all too hard. And you get nothing else done because you can't make this decision about which path to move forward with or whatever it is. So um, if, you, if you've got a particular situation that you need help with, just drop, jo jot, drop, either or send me an email um, and I'll just come back with a couple of dot points or a couple of ideas or whatever it might be. But just ask for help because there's plenty of people out there who um, understand your situation or can empathize with your situation or can give you some fresh eyes on your situation as well. Because when you are stuck down there in that gray, in that overwhelm, in that icky, ugh, it is sometimes really hard to pop back up and be rational and to, to remove the emotion from it all as well. So if you need help with that, you just, anybody, you just have to ask. So good luck school holidays. If there's lots of other, I know there's lots of other mamas on the line. Um, school holiday success, I've got to go, it's on it, I'm okay. Um, school holiday success is all about managing your own expectations and those of your clients or your customers. So don't be afraid to tell your customers or your clients that you've got kids at home or that you're working less this week because of school holidays. Update your email um, signature to say, you know, have some personality and say, Ugh, school holidays, doing my best, blah, 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 blah. Don't let the guilt um, come to the forefront. If you're taking a day off to spend time with your fam, freaking awesome good on you i am uh i've got a couple of days in the next two weeks where so i've got one puppet at school and one in preschool um and james my t my grade two so he's seven blah, uh he's doing holiday program he's got play dates he's got time with his um aunties and cousins and all that sort of stuff and he's got some time with me and with his dad as well so um we're tag teaming as parents work in in and out and around the business but if you are taking time out of your business to hang out with your little people that's what life is all about and that's why we all have small businesses or one of the main reasons why us as parents actually have small businesses is so that we can flick the switch and turn them on and off and we don't have to answer to a big boss and that we can do things on our terms so I want you to congratulate yourself for taking a day off to spend with the kids or spend with the family or to have extra kids in the house or whatever it might be don't sit there and feel like you're a shit person or you're a terrible business owner because this is why we have worked our butts off uh, and why we hustle day in, day out uh, is so that we don't have that big boss to answer for. And if you want to take three or four days or five or six or two weeks or whatever it is to spend with your fam, bloody well do it because you deserve it and your kids deserve it. It's, you know, life's short. So it's, um, it's really important for them and for you to take a breath hold hands and enjoy the big wide world out there. Don't let the guilt come in. So manage your expectations, manage your customers' expectations and not let the guilt take over. You deserve time off out of your biz. Your kids deserve, deserve some extra time with you. Um, and yep, it's absolutely a juggle. You might work a little bit more at night time just over school holidays. I know I do. Uh, I take a bit more time off during the day and I work a little bit more at night time, but that's the beauty of having my own biz. So, lots going on at ESS HQ. Uh, I have just booked an end of year party 
for the Melbourne Peeps in the ESS Biz Squad. Just freaking excited. Uh, so there's a, um, I'm going to start doing um, a couple of events. So I'm doing my workshops, but outside of workshops, just kind of network and bring people together. I hate the word networking, but just to bring everybody um, together into the same room. So if you're interstate, you can come and hang. And if you're in Melbourne, um, watch this space because there's some, I'm planning some super fun stuff. And Zoe, I'm actually going to talk to you because I'm going to book a bus to get the Bendigo Biz Squad to Melbourne. So I might, I was going to say, I might put you as the driver. You are not going to be the bus driver. You're going to be a passenger. But I'm going to organise with you guys to um, get the Bendigo Biz Squad down to Melbourne so that you guys can come play with us as well. Have an awesome week. If there's anything I can help with, just shout, shoot me an email. I hope that decision-making stuff was helpful. It's just always, um, I think, a good reminder just to kind of stop and go, okay, yep, yep, this is where I'm at. This is how I'm going to move forward, putting that deadline in place and off and racing. So uh, if I can help you in any single way, please shout out. Um, I'm around all week. Um, yeah, have a good week. Good luck with the school holidays. Manage your own expectations and guilt-free is my two big, big, big pieces of um, advice. Have fun. Like Life is there to be lived. So shut the laptop, get out into the big wide world. It's a beautiful day in Melbourne today. It's fresh, but there's no clouds, sun shining. Just go and enjoy yourself. Life's way too short to be stuck inside all the time. Have a great week. Chat to you later. Bye.